Marcus Rashford accident, one of those that really happened yesterday when he was really driving back to his home after we're gonna hit win Burnley. Welcome to Rokani. Sorry, welcome to United Matters channel. How are you guys and where you're watching us from? I go by the names of Rokan David. Smash like button, comment and share. If you're only totally watching us for the very first time, endeavor to subscribe to this channel so as not to miss out on stories that we do upload in here on a daily. Rokan David is my name. Evans has gonna hit to be lauded by the manager Eric Ten Hag and Ten Hag has gone ahead and obviously put more light on the win that we got yesterday against Burnley and this is what we bring you onto this channel. Now today Arsenal have gone ahead to draw 2-2 two -two with Tottenham Hotspur and they are now at 13 points and Manchester United is just 5 points behind them. Now this shows you exactly how a season can really turn around you know. We looked like some huge points behind them and now they are down to 5. And we are playing Crystal Palace next and Arsenal is playing Man City before we go into the international break. That shows you that by the time we go to the international break, we might either close down Arsenal or City depending on how we've gone ahead to put in these shifts. But I'm going to discuss more onto that with what Ten Hag is going ahead to say about our well-delivered win as we took over the side of, um, what's the name? The side of... The side of Burnley. Now, let's start it off with the Marcus Rashford accident that really happened when we really got our win, our way at Burnley. Now, we are told that it was reported by the Sun, Marcus Rashford was involved in an accident after the match accident Burnley. After the match against Burnley. He was, sh he wa he was shaken but suffered no injuries. Bruno Fernandes was also there and stopped to help. The driver of the other vehicle involved in Marcus Rashford's accident escaped unhurt. That is it. Now, an accident happened for Marcus Rashford, and um, it was not all that easy for the United Star, the United Star Boy, to obviously see it go on well. And this is the car of Marcus Rashford, and how to go to really the accident and the police at the scene and they are really demonstrating the two cars on how really things happen at that point but all in all the beauty is that marcus rashford is safe and is doing great and uh, nothing was really hurting but we don't know whether mentally he's really right but i can confirm to you that marcus rashford is really doing fine and uh, i know damian a friend of mine has gone ahead and he told me that they've told me that marcus rashford got an injury and is dead a friend told me so People try to spread information that is not really legit. And that's why for my case, before I really put out any story, I have to first obviously legitimize it and do a good thorough research about it, especially such stories like these that involve taking away people's lives, you know. Then we get another story coming in from Dan Sheldon, football news reporter covering Manchester United Man City for The Athletic, confirmed us that police spoke to Marcus Rashford and the other driver both unharmed and gave them a breathalyzer test before allowing them to return home no ambulance was needed so what the police was was to bring bring them a breathalyzer to test whether these two had really boosted something that would have gone ahead to affect them into this area but obviously it was found out that the two were not on any liquor or booze and he went ahead to play its role that's the police and the police found themselves in a position of really doing the needful so that's it coming in from marcus rashford those who are really afraid that he had gotten to get an injury it wasn't really all that serious not no unharmed though he really had a little bit of scare and the police really went ahead to obviously take us through that and marcus rashford is a hundred percent okay and is getting ready to take part into the training session of Man United either tomorrow or Tuesday as Ten Hag embarks on to getting us back to winning ways after seeing our side beat Burnley by one goal to nil away and it's the first away game we've gonna hit to win this season and it obviously replicates how bad we've been and how badly we needed that win in that particular time. As I told you yesterday, all what we needed was a win, nothing else. We needed to register a win to obviously take this to the next level. And I really believe that it's obviously going to work out like a charm <clears throat> for the Manchester club. Now, 
Leaving that, sad news. Let's go to some good news coming in from Eric Ten Hag on how we went ahead to really secure the three points yesterday. Ten Hag said the following. <clears throat> it was clear, of course, we needed that win. We had a tough run of games against good opponents. It wasn't necessary to lose those games. Today was must win. The team spirit and how they fight together was impressive. It was a team attacking with 11, defending with 11. It's like Eric Ten Hag always goes ahead to listen to my match reactions and what I call in for these players to do each and every time before the game is going to be played. Because I always talk about Manchester United players playing as a team, you know? Because when you play as a team, you find yourself in a situation of really not losing out on <coughs> games. That is it. You defend as a team and you attack as a team. Compactness is all over the page. So you make it hard for your you make it hard for your opponents to obviously come in through and obviously score against you because that compactness is what makes it hard to really see your team concede. So Ten Hag liked the team spirit and as I told you that because we had Hannibal and Scott McTominay doing their role, especially Hannibal, adding a lot of interest in that midfield, it helped him obviously secure that 18 yards box area, especially on the D, where we've seen very many teams penalizing us. Even Bayern Munich, the first goal and the second goal, it was because we marked poorly. That is it, at that area. Brighton, all the three goals we considered against Brighton, it was because we badly marked that area and that territory was really was really <laughs> marked very well by um by Hannibal Mejabri and he really tracked back very well and it really showed how a good student Eric Ten Hag is, is from his mistakes and obviously got in a player who could cover that position because it was not like we are conceding from crosses no we concede through the central axis Teams spread the game wide, then they approach our 18 yards box area and go in for a cutback. And we never had players into that position. That really costed us as a club of Manchester United, and we had to obviously find a solution to that. And I think Ten Hag found a solution to that, and I'm really happy that we've gone ahead and obviously get that win. I'm really against everyone who says that we won ugly. Let me tell you. I've seen Mourinho lift a Premier League trophy not once, nor twice in that league of the Premier League while playing ugly. Salex Ferguson was not a man who obviously played good. He played ugly football. That is it. But all what he could do was to really give them what we call that never said die character, especially for the players of Manchester United. And they won. But it was not like we are really a very good passing team. No way. We were just an efficient team. We always got the basics right and really killed off the games when required. So that is it coming in from the manager himself. That is that is Eric Ten Hag. So he went ahead to obviously praise the players. And one of those that obviously had a very big hail for was John Evans, a man of the moment. And he really had the following to say about him. He said... John Evans gave the team calmness. His skill was brilliant as with the goal. So, people should try to get their narratives right. <clears throat> John Evans is a different kind of player altogether. He's better than Harry Maguire and that has been really shown to us on several occasions. And yesterday, he showed what he can bring <clears throat> on the day, you know. He brought his A game to the table, scored a goal, was really rectified, and he found an assist for Bruno Fernandes. Obviously hit it at the back of the net. That is what class brings. Aging like fine wine brings that on the table of Evans. And let me assure you, if at all you really believe that, you know football, Johnny Evans is a baller. He's a baller. He won area duels and put in a shift that Harry Maguire wouldn't obviously give us. You put Harry Maguire into that team, he obviously costs us a goal instead. That is it. So for Johnny Evans, he was really a very good player and Eric Ten Hag went ahead to hail him. Now after Ten Hag went ahead to hail him, John Evans himself had a statement to say about how he was almost willing or really considering quitting the game of football. But 
United gave him a second chance and obviously came back to life. What has John Evans have to say? He said, I loved every minute of it. Before the game, you get a feeling I couldn't wait. Just pure excitement coming up here on the bus I was buzzing. That was my 200th game for Man United. I never thought I would ever reach that figure. The best night of my life. He knows the DNA of Manchester United. And one of the reasons that was given for Ten Hag to bring back John Evans at the club of Manchester United was that John Evans knows exactly what the club of Manchester United is all about. And he brings the best of the United never said a character into that dressing room because Ferguson really groomed him into a player that played at a high level and was really a very good defender and that's what he had to say so your thoughts on the Marcus Rashford accident are welcome in the comment section below what do you make about Evans lauded by Eric Ten Hag and Evans breaking silence on his world-class performance or master-class performance yesterday as we really beat Burnley by one goal to nil I sign out for now. See you later. And I cover you all in the precious blood of Jesus Christ. The Muslim viewers and subscribers. Barak Laufikum. I'm out.